We present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid, with Peter Sinclair's grandfather, Patricia Burke's mother, Diana Day's Susan, and Leonard Williams as Theodore Craythorpe in... What a picnic! Susan, keep your head still or I'll never get these curlers in. Sorry, Mother, but I seem to have been sitting here for ages. Well, it was your idea, having a home perm, and on a Saturday morning when I'm up to my eyes in work. Well, I want to look really nice for Billy this weekend. Well, just turn your head. Come on, that's it, that's it. Is Billy coming with us on the picnic tomorrow? Oh, yes. He's quite looking forward to it. He says that after being cooped up in an office all week, he could use some fresh air. Yeah, so could I. (sighs) This firming stuff isn't exactly eau de cologne. Mum, I wanted to ask you if... Poo, what a shocking poo. <laughs> Jimmy, that'll do. What did you come in here for anyway? I wanted to know if I can go swimming tomorrow when we go on the picnic. If you don't behave yourself, there'll be no picnic for you. That's right, Mother. You put him in his place. Yes, all right, Susan. Leave it to me, will you please? That's right, Mum. You put her in her place. <laughs> Try the dustbin. <laughs> Cheeky little horror. I won't do any more of this and you'll stay home tomorrow. Oh, but, Mum... Don't answer back. But, uh, I don't want to hear another word from you. Is that clear? Oh, there you are, Jim. You get me the stamps from the post office. Hey, Jimmy, I'm talking to you. What about the stamps? Why don't you answer me? I can't. I've got to keep my big mouth shut. <laughs> What's going on here? I told him to keep quiet. And if he doesn't behave himself, he won't be going with us tomorrow. There's not much use me going anyway. What do you mean? Well, you're all grown-ups except me. I'll have nobody to play with. Well, we'll play with you. Hmm, you said that last time, and look what happened. As soon as we got there, Mum and Mr Craythorpe found somewhere quiet to have a nap. Susan and Billy found some thick bushes, and you found the red lion. (laughs) Jimmy, that'll do. All right, bud, all right. Jimmy, if uh, we invited one of your little friends along to the picnic, you'd have plenty of fun then, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, but I'd have more fun if you invited me little enemy, my pal Ozzy. <laughs> well, what do you say, Pat? All right, then. I suppose you should have a playmate with him. There you are, Susan. They're all in. You can go now. Thanks, Mother. You'll come out this this afternoon, then? Yes, I will, love. Thanks. I'll just go upstairs. Allow me to open the door, Lady Clitheroe. Oh, thank you, kind sir. Not at all. Do call again to have your hair done, madam. We're always glad to see you. You're such a change from all those poodles. (laughs) (laughs) You and your silly jokes. So we'll leave it to you uh, to invite Ozzy then, Jimmy. All right, but we'd need plenty of food, ma'am. You know what it's like for eating. It can get four sandwiches down while you're putting the salt on your old bald egg. <laughs> oh, you don't have to come out with them. Well, Pat, I'll be away now. Are you going out, Father? Uh, yes, I'm going to get my hair cut. I've left it a bit too long. A bit too long? If it grows much further down your back, you'll look like you're wearing your spur and the wrong way round. <laughs> Father, you'd better take Jimmy with you. He's overdue for a haircut as well. Oh, Mum, you know I hate going to the barbers. I'll stop here and and you can give me a quick once round with the pudding mason. (laughs) Don't be silly. Off you go with your granddad. (coughs) Hey, granddad. What? Uh, what's the matter, Jim? Uh, put your paper down a minute. There's a man here going to have his hair cut. Oh, what about it? He's as bald as a football bladder. <laughs> no, Jimmy. He's I... got more on his eyebrows than he's got on his head. <laughs> Look, he's going to have a shave. Next, please. Right, Jim, off you go now. Into the middle chair. No, you go, Grandad. I don't like that fella. Why not? Well, he talks so daft. Just because he comes from Liverpool, he calls everybody whacker. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with that? It reminds me of our headmaster, the biggest whacker of the lot. Next, <laughs> please. Jimmy, come on, get in the chair. Oh, all right, Grandad. But if he starts his funny talk, I'll kick his kneecaps. Oh, there you are, whacker. I thought you was never coming. 
Come on, get in the chair. All right. Hey, can I ask you a question? Oh, what is it? Well, you see the bald chap in the next chair? Yes. Well, when he has his hair cut, do you use clippers or just a quick rub round with a sheet of sandpaper? <laughs> now, look here, Sonny. We're very busy this morning. How do you want your hair cutting? Oh, just trim it up at the back. And when you've finished, I don't want any of that hair cream on. Why? There's nothing wrong with that cream. Except the smell. It's got a very nice smell. I oh, know, that's just it. I'm captain of the Black Hand Gang. I can't go around smelling like a flower bed. <laughs> no, just keep your head still. Yes. You see, when you're captain of the Black Hand Gang, you've got to be careful. Charlie Thompson was our last captain, and he got slung out. What for? He broke the most important rule of the gang. He was seen in broad daylight with a girl. Well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Being seen with a Judy? <laughs> you know, gang, that's a bigger crime than washing your neck. You yeah, what? Oh, it wouldn't last five minutes as captain if they saw me with a girl. Do you know what they'd do to me? No, what? They'd stick a goldfish bowl on me head, two skyrockets up me jersey, and launch me into outer space. <laughs> oh, that's charming. Morning, everybody. Oh, uh, hello, Higginbotham. Morning, I see. Morning, Mr. Sinclair. Oh, there's my pal, Ozzy. I want a word with him. Hey, Ginger Nut, I want to talk to you. Look, sit still. Get back in the chair. But it's my pal, Ozzy. That's him eating the meat pie. Look at the size of it. All you can see are his ears sticking out at the sides. <laughs> You'll have no ears if you don't sit still. <laughs> Behave yourself. But, Grandad, I want to tell Ozzy about our picnic. Did you say picnic? We're having it tomorrow afternoon. Do you want to come? Mm, yeah, please. Right, be at our house at two o'clock. Do you like salmon sandwiches? Mmm, yeah. Well, uh, bring a loaf of bread and your fishing rod. <laughs> hey, Higginbottom, will you get this laddie horse from under me feet? Keep your shirt on, mate. It wouldn't be in your way if it wasn't for this young whelp, Clitheroe. You're in a bad temper, aren't you, Mr Higginbottom? Did the rent man call and catch you in? <laughs> I don't want any cheek from you, look. Jimmy, just keep quiet. Look, will you all go and sit down? All right. But I'll tell you one thing, Sinclair. If that young brat were my son, he'd be sorry for himself. I know, I'd have Ozzy for a brother. <laughs> Stay for a cup of tea, Mrs. Peters. No, thanks, Mrs. Clitheroe. We must be going. But it's very nice of you to offer to look after Shirley tomorrow. Oh, it'll be a pleasure. You can't take a young girl with you when you're visiting sick relations. And she'll be company for Jimmy on the picnic. And you'll like that now, won't you, Shirley? Oh, yes, Mummy. I think Jimmy's very funny sometimes. But he, he doesn't seem to think much of girls. <laughs> oh, all boys are like that, dear. Don't you worry. You'll have a good time with Jimmy. He can be quite a little gentleman when he wants to. That flipping barber. He ought to be in Australia shearing sheep. Uh, Jimmy. <laughs> he hasn't left me anything to comb. Talk about sin, Jimmy, with a taper. I think he went round with a blow lamp. <laughs> Jimmy, we've got visitors. What? Hello, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Mrs. Peters. Hello, Jimmy. Oh. <laughs> hello, Shirley. Jimmy, I've got a surprise for you. You know you wanted a playmate on the picnic. Yes, I I've just seen Ozzy. Well, Shirley's coming with us. And I told him that... You what? <laughs> I've told Mrs. Peters you'll be only too pleased to look after her. I hope you don't mind me coming with you, Jimmy. Of course I do. Uh, uh, don't. <laughs> I'm delighted. Just what I... Wanted a girlfriend for company. Do you think it'll rain? <laughs> I really must go now, Mrs. Clitheroe. Mr. Peters and I will be back about nine tomorrow night. We'll call here for Shirley. That's fine. I'll see you to the door. Thanks. Goodbye, Jimmy. Uh, ta -ra. See you tomorrow, Jimmy, at the picnic. Oh, yes. I can't wait for Monday morning. <laughs> Come along, dear. Coming, Mummy. Bye, Jimmy. Till tomorrow. Till all, Shirley. Oh, heck. Trust me, Mum, to get me into trouble. Still, what can you expect? She was a girl herself once. Hey, Jimmy. 
Grandad Shirley's coming with us on the picnic. Oh, now that'll be nice. But I've got to look after her. Me, playing blooming nursemaid to a gym slip. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're grumbling about. Shirley's very charming. Well, that's fixed. Oh, Father, Shirley's coming to the picnic tomorrow. So I've gathered from Jim here. He doesn't seem to want her company, though. Well, that's just too bad. It's not two hours ago he was complaining he'd have nobody to play with. But Shirley's a girl. You don't play with girls. You make faces at them through the school railings. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's Ozzy's dad just coming out of the house. Hello, Mr Higginbottom. Oh, it's you again. What do you want now? I want to see Ozzy, please. Is he in? No, he isn't. He's gone to the chip shop. Why, is your vinegar bottle empty again? <laughs> <laughs> I'll belt you in a minute, look. Now, what do you want him for? I want to tell him not to bother about tomorrow. The picnic's off. Off? It was only an hour ago you said it was on. I know, but, um, my granddad's just been reckoning up how much it'll cost and he says we can't afford it. What? It can't cost all that much. Well, it's the food. Now Ozzy's coming, we'll have to buy two dozen ham sandwiches, ten sausage rolls, six cream cakes, three pork pies, and that's just for him. <laughs> Look, I'm in a hurry, so cut out the comedy. You say the picnic's definitely off? Yes, I I'm afraid so. You know, is that your James? Oh, blimey, here comes Casanova Craythorp. <laughs> I'm just on my way to your house, James. Oh, good morning, Higginbottom. Morning, Craythorp. Hey. Hey, you're getting a bit daring, aren't you? Yellow waistcoat with a bowler hat. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry I can't emulate the fashion of present company. Spotted muffler with a dirty cap. <laughs> I'm wearing this muffler because I have to. Oh, why? He's got no shirt on. <laughs> I'll do time for you yet, look. If you want to know, I've got to have this scarf because I've got a sore throat. Well, why don't you give your throat a rest? <laughs> James, I must get along to your house. Your mother wants to talk to me about the picnic tomorrow. Picnic? Yes, I believe your son Oswald is joining us. Uh, Mr Craythorpe. That's funny, I thought the picnic was off. Oh, no. I spoke to Mrs Clitheroe not five minutes ago on the telephone. We're all going in my car, so the picnic can't be off. No, but I am blabbermouth. Come here, you. <laughs> now then, that was all a pack of lies you just told me. Oh, Mr Higginbottom, let go of me arm. You're bigger than me. Yes, you bully. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Yes, like Mr Craythorpe. Exactly. No, I'd I'd be delighted. <laughs> now, now, keep away, you lout. Have you gone mad? Starting a common brawl on the public highway? Yes, Mr Higginbottom, you can't do that. Take him in the house and fight him in there. <laughs> James, will you stop talking like that? Oh, out of me way, the pair of you. And don't worry, Clitheroe. Ozzy won't be coming to your fancy picnic. Now clear off, I'm in a hurry. Come along, James. There's no point in trying to reason with him. In his present mood, it would be tempting Providence just to ask him the time. If he's in a hurry, we know the time. Opening time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very droll. Uh, but you know, James, I still don't understand what all that was about. Oh, I'm in trouble because of Shirley. If I had him here, I'd shoot the fellow that wrote that song. What song? Thank heaven for little girls. <laughs> So you see, Mum, we were walking down the street and we met Ozzy's dad, didn't we, Mr Craythorpe? Uh, yes, that's right. And he told us, us the sad news, uh, didn't he, Mr Craythorpe? Uh, well, I suppose so. What sad news? Well, well you see, Mum, it's like this. I'll answer it, Pat. Ozzy won't be able to come to the picnic because he's got uh, uh, spots, uh, uh, measles. Uh, hasn't he, Mr Craythorpe? Uh, well, really, I think I should be going. But you saw him in the barber shop not two hours ago. Surely he didn't have measles then. Oh, well, they came on all of a sudden. Uh, you know, uh, galloping measles. <laughs> Stop talking nonsense. Galloping measles. Now, what is wrong with Ozzy? Here, Jimmy. Higginbotham's on the phone. Now, what have you been saying to him? Well, uh, what did he say, I said? He's gone mad, shouting something about his son Ozzy not being good enough for the high and mighty Clitheroes. Jimmy, I've been listening to your nonsense long enough. What have you been up to? Well, uh, you see, um, it was nothing, really. Come on out with it now. You're always causing trouble with Mr Higginbottom. What happened? I, I think I'd better explain. 
I saw James talking to Mr. Higginbottom, so I went over and mentioned the picnic, not knowing what James had already said. I'd no sooner told Higginbottom that the picnic was on when he went berserk. So it was you who caused all the trouble? <laughs> no, I did nothing to arouse his temper. He did? You told him he was wearing a dirty cap? Uh, well, uh, yes, I did, but I did... Uh, look, we haven't time for a conference. The man's still on the phone. I'll speak to him, Father. If Ozzy can come tomorrow, he'll be welcome. Theodore. What was all that bother about when I, when I was answering the phone? Oh, I don't know. I, I lost track of the argument when we got onto galloping measles. Galloping measles? What are you blathering about? Well, it all started when James and I... Oh, Mr Sinclair, it's all a lot of nonsense. Let's forget it. No, I insist on hearing what you were talking about. It's no use, Mr Craythorpe. You'll just have to tell him. Tell him what? That pack of lies you told me mother. <laughs> Well, Pat, this is what I call a picnic. The weather's perfect, we picked a lovely spot, and you certainly did us proud with the food, my dear. Thanks, Father. Are you glad you came, Shirley? Oh, yes, I'm really enjoying myself. Uh, Jimmy? Yes? Shall we make some more daisy chains? No, thanks. I couldn't stand any more excitement. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, don't be rude. Well, I want to go swimming with Ozzy. I've told you, you can both go swimming when your food has had time to digest and not before. In that case, Ozzy won't be ready till Christmas Day. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, you do say some funny things. I don't know how you think of them. Who I'm all there with my cough drops. <laughs> Yeah, Pat, where's Theodore? He's gone to get his camera out of the car. We're all going to have a photograph taken. Here he is now. Well, now, if you could all arrange yourselves in a group, I should get a good one here. Where do you want us, Theodore? Uh, I suggest we have the grown-ups sitting down and the children standing behind. Uh, Mr Sinclair, could you move a little to your left? Oh, very well. Right, Theodore? No, no not right. Left. I know. When I said right, I was asking you if I was far enough left. Uh, uh, sit there, Mr. Sinclair. Oh, 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 oh! What's the matter with you, Ossie? You've just sat on his pie. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, how, how's this, Theodore? Uh, let me see. Uh, no, no, it's that tree in the distance. It's going to look as though it's growing out of your head. Move a bit forward, Father. There you are, about there. Oh, he, he can't sit there, Mum. Why not? Well, Grandad's got his kilt on. And that's where I found the ant's nest. <laughs> well, I do hear Theodore. Uh, yes, that's fine. Now, now, James, you stand there next to Shirley. You what? Uh, uh, closer to her than that, James. Uh, James, do move up. Come on, you can get much closer. <laughs> no, thanks, Shirley. I I'm all right here. But Mr. Craythorpe wants to get you in the picture. Yes, and Master Higginbottom wants to get me in the doghouse. <laughs> uh, right, everybody. Now, smile, please. Oh, oh, just a moment. Susan and Billy aren't here. We must have them in the photograph. Well, they were here a minute ago. I wonder where they've gone. Can't you guess? Jimmy, <laughs> just stop that sort of talk and go on off and see if you can find them. Oh, all right, Mum. Can I come with you, Jimmy? <laughs> no, don't bother, Shirley. You stop it here and dig some worms for Ozzy. He's hungry again. <laughs> Jimmy, I, sh <laughs> I shan't tell you any more. It's all right, Shirley. Go with him if you want to. Well, I don't want to go if I'm not wanted. Oh, come on, then. Any minute now, we'll have the waterworks. <laughs> Jimmy, for the last time... I'm going, Mum. I think they went round here, Shirley. Jimmy, have I done something that's annoyed you? Um, no, not really. But you've been avoiding me all day. I thought maybe you didn't like me. It's not that. It's Ozzy and the gang. Oh, I see. You're not supposed to bother with girls. No, especially me. I'm the captain. But, Jimmy, surely there's no harm in talking to a girl. Shh, keep quiet. Well, if you're going to be rude... Shh, it's not that. Listen, behind those bushes. Oh, Susan, I'm glad we came today. So am I, Billy. Mm. <laughs> Jimmy, what are they doing? Chasing butterflies. <laughs> if I lean over this bush, I, I might see him. Oh, hey, what, what's the matter? It's a ghost bush. <laughs> I'll beat round the corner. Are you comfortable, Susan? Mm, yes, Billy. 
Jimmy, we shouldn't be standing here watching them like this. You're right. Nip back and get Mr. Craythorpe's camera. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not nice. It's like watching a film that you're not old enough to see. You're very pretty. Do you mean that, Billy? Yes. I think you're lovely. Poor Billy, I think he's got to touch his son. <laughs> I'd better get him away so he can have his photo taken while he's still breathing. <laughs> now, break it up, you two. You want him back at the camp. What? All right, Billy, get that raspberry jam off your face. <laughs> what are you doing here? Bird watching. <laughs> <laughs> what a pair. Susan Sparrowlegs and little Billy Cuckoo. <laughs> But, Mum, why can't Ozzy and me go swimming on our own? Because Shirley wants to swim as well, and so she's coming with you. But she'll be no good with us. As well as swimming, we're going to go running, jumping and climbing trees. Well, what about it? She's only a weak little girl. Our games are too rough for her. She'd even get tired out playing marbles. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to stand for any more nonsense. Shirley's going swimming with you, and that's that. All right, then, but don't be surprised if we bring her back on a stretcher. Are you ready for the race, Ozzy? Yes, I'm ready. Jimmy, can I be in the race? Y you can if you want to, but we're going as far as that bridge and back, and it's a long way for a girl. Well, I'd like to have a go, if you don't mind. Oh, well, I shan't be seeing you for a while. Cheerio. Ready, set, Go! Oh, there you are, Jimmy. Come on, give me a hand. I'll help you onto the bank. <laughs> what happened to you? Did you get cramp? <laughs> no, I didn't. You might have told me you were a mermaid's daughter. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's bound to be other things you can do better than me. Yes, you're right. Hey, have you ever won any medals for running? Oh, no. Good, come on. I'll race you across this field. Well, aren't you going to wait for Ozzy? Look, he's still in the water. Oh, he'll be all right. He's brought his rubber duck. <laughs> well, as soon as you're ready, I'll race you to that gate and back. I'm sure I shan't be as lucky this time. Here I am, Jimmy. Oh, you are out of breath. It's impossible. I picked these flowers while I was waiting for you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I hey, thought you said you hadn't won any medals for running. Oh, I haven't. Only cups. <laughs> Have you won anything for running? Yes, when I won the egg and spoon race, they let me keep the egg. <laughs> Look. See that big oak tree? Mm -hmm. I'll bet I can climb it to the top quicker than you can. All right. Go on, and I'll give you a leg up to start you off. Jimmy, Jimmy, it's a lovely view up here. Aren't you coming any higher? I can't, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck? I've got my braces caught round a branch. <laughs> <laughs> well, try wriggling yourself free. I've tried. Every time I move, another button goes. <laughs> I don't know whether to climb down and risk getting arrested or stay here and build a nest. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, hang on and I'll come down. Now, keep quite still. Don't move whatever you do. Well, James, I must say I've had a wonderful afternoon with my camera. I've been taking snapshots all over the place. James, you don't seem very interested. I'm not. Now I'm fed up. <laughs> oh, of course. I've heard about the way little Shirley kept getting the better of you. Who told you? Your friend Oswald. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't tell the Black Hand gang about it. <laughs> he better not. I've given him a penknife to keep him quiet. <laughs> yes, I believe so. Together with six glass alleys, two toffee apples and a frog. <laughs> well, the telltale tit. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. He also said he would have demanded your rabbit hutch as well, but it needs a new bottom. Wait till I get my foot near him. He'll need a new one as well. <laughs> well, 
Well, this is a surprise, Theodore. Fancy you winning a prize in the photo competition. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I haven't seen the paper myself, but apparently the winning entries are on the back page. Mm -hmm. Well, Jim's just gone to get the papers in the other room. Do you know which of your photographs won the prize? Uh, no, I submitted several of the snaps I took at our little picnic last week. Yes. I believe I should be getting two guineas. <laughs> well, I hope you still speak to us when you're rich. I've got the paper. Oh, uh, right. Turn over to the back page, James. Oh, look at all these photos. Hey, there's one that... Oh, flipping heck. What's the matter, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> it's Theodore's winning entry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one I took just after James fell out of the tree. <laughs> 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 oh, there's little Shirley holding him up. Yes, and she's got both her blinking arms round me. <laughs> and the gang will see it. Mr. Craythorpe, where's your camera? It's at home. Why? Go and get it. I want Grandad to take a picture of you and me for next week's competition. A picture of you and me? Yes, we'll call it Small Boy Murders Big Ape. <laughs> I say, don't some mothers have them? <laughs> Nice recording of the Clivero Kid, you heard Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Leonard Williams, Diana Day, Peter Goodwright, Tony Melody, Carol Gardner and Joan Sharp. The theme music was written by Alan Roper and played by the BBC Northern Dance Orchestra, directed by Alan Ainsworth. The programme was written by Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey and starred Jimmy Clithero as the kid himself. I thought you might like to know I'm still captain of the Black Hand Gang. They saw the photograph. And when we had our next meeting, they voted Ozzy as captain. It made me sick. Kept coming up to me and saying, I'm in charge. <laughs> anyway, I fixed him. Yesterday, my mum invited Shirley and Ozzy round to tea. And later on, I left them together on the front room settee and got the gang to come round and peep through the window. <laughs> and that was the end of lover boy Higginbottom. <laughs> well, it was bound to be when the gang saw Ozzy kneeling at Shirley's feet. What they didn't know was that I'd thrown a quarter of jelly babies all over the floor. <laughs> Ta-da!